Hello, I'm Mark Winberry. I'm really glad you're here today. I'm the U.S. Uh, Operations Director for Pronovix. Hi, I'm Adam Bolog, and I'm working as a technical writer for Pronovix. So we're, uh, today we're here to talk about uh, Docs as Code and the workflows around that. It's a huge topic, and there are many great books and blogs that you can find about it to learn more. Um, and I just want to point out that as Adam and I were working on an outline for this presentation, we kept wanting to go off in various directions because there are so many interesting kind of sidebars that are related and uh, decided that just like when you're hiking and you see interesting paths that you want to take, uh, you can't really uh, get to your destination if you go off on side paths. So um, you're going to see some paths and topics today that you wish we would go more deeply in, but we don't have time to go. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to come back to them on a later date uh, and explore, hopefully, with some of you. Uh, after the webinar, we're going to send out uh, a feedback questionnaire to see how we did. And we'd love it if you tell us which of these topics you would like for us to visit in future blogs or webinars or conference talks. So first off, um, since we can't cover everything and we're just going to keep it basic, I'm going to try to present it in a simple and generic way uh, so that the overall picture is clear. And then uh, Adam is going to make it real uh, with some demos. But we want to make sure that you leave today uh, understanding what a Docsys code workflow is all about, what some of the tools are, and how they can improve your documentation. But first, the critical question is, why should you care? Uh, well, we're assuming that because you're here, you have a developer portal or are thinking about one. Um, if you have one, you you may think that it's just a collection of your digital assets and documentation that offers some interfaces to your customers, partners, or vendors. And if that's where you're at, we hope to expand your view. If you want to improve the success of your API program or or the product strategy that your API program is supporting, you should really be thinking about your dev portal as more than just reference docs. Some people think they're done whenever they uh, publish the reference docs, but uh, just as um, good reference docs are important by themselves, they're not enough. Uh, as an example, just consider trying to learn a foreign language by looking at a dictionary. It's, uh, it's helpful, but you're not going to learn the language that way. Same is true with your reference docs. Uh, we hope you'll consider many of the other types of documentations and elements that can help make your developer portal into a real self-service hub. And because it serves as an interface between you and your customers, some of whom you may never talk to, uh, or they may never talk to your sales or marketing or support team, it can become the playing field where you will win or lose. Making great user journeys through your developer portal will establish trust with your customers and help turn them into fans of your company. Also, uh, just uh, uh, something we see sometimes is that uh, the assumption is that everyone who comes to your developer portal are technical users, but we find that many program managers, business solutions ar architects, and other business people at your customers or partners they're coming to uh, your developer portal too. Uh, they want to evaluate your offerings and learn about what you're doing. And so uh, keep them in mind as well. Uh, we hope to demonstrate today how adopting some automation and quality checking will help you enable the best experiences for your customers while making your, your program more efficient, effective, and deliver more value, all while saving you money. So even though today's talk focuses on the technical side of content authoring, when you think about your internal organization, realize that you've got various stakeholders within your organization that have different needs. So here are some common personas that we use at Pronovix to think about uh, different people who use our product. Uh, you've got Ben, Sasha, and Elizabeth, who are producing technical content, and as such, they're more likely to use or be willing to use more technical workflows. 
but again, don't neglect the needs of your business users. They're very key to your program's success. Uh, take Sophia, your API product owner, or Stefan from Product Marketing. Uh, they need to provide conceptual content, uh, do very important things like explain your value proposition and the business and legal terms for using your services. Uh, they're going to be happier with an editorial interface with WYSIWYG editors and the ability to create pages by placing uh, and populating blocks that don't require them to edit HTML or CSS, even if they can't. However, the majority of your content and the content that tends to need the most maintenance will come from your technical team. And if your experience is like mine, then you're accustomed to hearing that the business wants bigger, better, faster, more, and the inevitable work smarter, not harder, which I've learned is a coded message for you're not going to get any more budget. Uh, you just have to find ways to be more efficient. So if you're feeling the squeeze between these business demands and what you uh, know that you need to provide to make your customer successful, this is where the doc ops approach of docs as code can help you. It can help you by allowing you to move faster, improve and ensure the quality of your documentation and work in tighter collaboration with your development team. So we're going to start with a, a quick look at what five, uh, what the five functional areas of Doc Ops are. It starts with content strategy, uh, editorial style guides, then moves into automated testing, automated deployment, and content analytics. So first, if we think about your content strategy, can your customers understand why they should integrate with your program? Does your site clearly uh, convey key concepts and how to use your service? Uh, having a, a content strategy that addresses these questions reduces friction, helps make your customers successful faster, and uh, establishes trust with them. Also result in less reliance on your support team. Uh, secondly, you've got uh, an editorial style guide. This helps you avoid having a site looks that, uh, that looks cobbled together and promotes consistency and clarity in your communication. Um, it defines the styles of references, a consistent tone and presentation that reinforces your brand. Note that this isn't really a matter of what's right and wrong. It's a, a subjective take on what's right for your organization. Uh, applying the docs as code method means that you're using the same tooling for writing documentation that you use for working on code uh, in the same way that you have uh, code editors that have plugin uh, plugins for uh, reporting coding style violations and uh, can run unit tests you can configure the same code editors with plugins for reporting writing style violations and inconsistencies in your documentation with regard to your company's content strategy and editorial style guides. This also incorporates larger quality assurance tools for documentation that can not only check the consistency of your markup language, but can also incorporate tests to catch annoying functional errors. If you're like me, uh, you'd probably be rich if only you had a dollar for every time that you were on a website and you uh, were about to click a link for the one document or uh, guide or diagram that you think is going to make everything clear, and you click the link and get the dreaded 404 page not found error. Uh, that's a real trust killer, which can be avoided even in huge documenta uh, documentation stacks with thousands and thousands of pages and cross references. Also, we'll talk a little bit more about the collaborative gains that Docs as Code introduces um, and that culminates in automated deployments. It brings your collaboration and testing between your documentation and code changes together so that your documentation doesn't lag the code changes that are happening in your production system and you're able to avoid uh, the work associated 
with manual deployment and the errors that can come from that. As I thought about this, I thought about uh, what's fun and different about waiting uh, for the orchestra to tune up and you hear them randomly uh, practicing little snippets of what they're going to play, but it's very uncoordinated. Uh, whereas in Docs' code, uh, with an automated deployment, it's kind of like when the conductor takes the stage and everything starts running uh, with uh, symphonic coordination and produces something really beautiful. Last but not least, a lot of people forget that they should be doing content analytics. It's really important to, under, to use content analytics to uh, learn if you're achieving the goals set out in your content strategy. Uh, it also allows you to benchmark where you are in terms of your ability to meet the needs of your users and gives you a, 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 a great place to get started to know if the improvements that you're trying to implement are being uh, effective. As the adage goes, that which gets measured gets managed. Uh, these metrics can help you by showing you your users flow through your site. Are they consistently following the flows that you imagine them flowing? Or are they just bouncing around uh, from page to page and then landing on your search bar and searching? So, as I said, uh, we're not going to be able to go in depth and any one of those things that we just covered are a topic unto themselves or could even have books written about them. But we're really gonna focus in on uh, a quick survey of the part of Doc Ops that forms the core of Docs' code. We'll talk a little bit about editorial style guides uh, because uh, automated testing, where we'll spend most of our time talking, um, really uh, builds upon that editorial style guide. Your editorial style, style guide is the embodiment of what you want your documentation to look like and how it should read. And because of that, it becomes the, uh, the foundation for what quality means in your organization and becomes a key source for the style checking portion of your documentation. As you'll see, automated deployment is just a natural extension of automated testing. We're not going to go too much into that today, but we will uh, kind of brush up against it. I told you that Docs' code is really about uh, looking at the development workflows and applying the same methods to your documentation practices. Uh, collaboration is a key part of the process, and here's where you begin to see the start of that. Git and the workflows that came from it allow uh, developers to work in parallel. You've got developers who are operating in iterative ways, uh, writing tests, uh, writing code, testing their code, building the code, testing the build, and deploying without waiting for everyone to be done. Uh, take, for example, here, developer Jane. Uh, she's uh, writing code and running unit tests, and when she's happy and thinks that uh, she's done, she commits her code and her tests into a Git repo. Um, so continuous integration starts with uh, the successful merge of her code, which is kind of a test unto itself because merge conflicts uh, indicate that uh, not everyone's on the same page. So resolving those merge conflicts is the first kind of test that happens. Um, then you've got CICD tools that kick in and uh, conduct and uh, conduct automated builds. They run automated tests. If the build results and the test results are good uh, and everyone is happy, then you either have a release candidate or you might be waiting for some other features or um, fixes to be built and they'll come in another build where some other developers features are or fixes are likewise included. Some additional workflows often written with the same tooling uh, then automates the de deployment to production, uh, making the latest features and fixes live, which can make customer Frank happy and uh, just, you know, points out that uh, your organization is fast and responsive and you're delivering value to the customer faster. If this seems daunting to you, depending on your organization, 
you should know that teams in larger organizations are running hundreds of builds per day against thousands of APIs and deploying fixes and features and new features, uh, fixes and new features uh, multiple times per day. So conceptually, it really is this simple. Uh, docs as code means using the same workflows and same patterns as the code development workflow. In some, case, uh, some cases, you're actually using the, the very same tools, and the only real difference is the content and some of the plugins that uh, those tools are using. So now let's observe tech writer Adam. Uh, he, he can write Markdown in a code editor with a different set of plugins that serve as his unit test framework. So instead of linting JavaScript, he's linting Markdown. Um, and instead of your build tests running functional tests against code, you can run functional tests against all of your uh, documentation in mass, uh, which will do things like verify that links from one document uh, are, are correctly cross-linking to other documents, that all of your links are valid, images are present, and uh, as well as many other types of, uh, of tests, functional and uh, style. Um, so I hope you can see the potential that Docs' code can mean for your business. Uh, at Pronovix, we're excited about this because we have seen uh, this successfully implemented with uh, a number of customers, some of which who, um, as I mentioned, have thousands of docs referencing uh, thousands of APIs, and we've helped them implement these kinds of workflows. And whether or not you do business with us, uh, we hope to help you along the way and hope that you can too. Because Git and the tools around it can be used in uh, multiple ways, the boundaries between what is uh, continuous integration and what is continuous deployment can seem blurry at times. And for people who are really passionate about this area, you may see them arguing about which tool is best and where the line between CI and CD really falls. Um, and this is partly because uh, many of the same tools can be used in different ways within these workflow pipelines. And so that's one reason that you hear CICD just said together as a single abbreviation. Another is that continuous deployment is just the logical extension of continuous integration. While we certainly don't have time to talk about all of these tools, I'd be remiss if I didn't call attention to at least some of the major players that are out there. Uh, these, there are lots and lots of great tools, but you're probably likely using some of these tools already in your organization. So I just wanted to point out uh, these. I've got a particular soft spot in my heart for uh, Travis CI and Jenkins and, of course, GitHub. Uh, now I'm going to pass the presentation over to Adam, who's going to zoom in and show you, show you the actual tools and uh, take you uh, in a short round trip that a tech writer can make starting from their desktop environment. Thank you, Mark. I hope anyone can hear me well. The goal is to achieve quality documentation, and high quality documentation is important for establishing trust with your downstream developers, decision makers. Uh, in this regard, I am defining quality documentation that is free of functional errors like broken links and missing images, is synchronized with the functionality of your product, uh, the content is accurate, uh, in that uh, reflects any recent changes, is consistent with your organization style so that it doesn't read like an afterthought that was thrown together because we had to have docs, can be found easily by the potential readers or developers, so it's tagged and keyword rich, and uh, useful and easy or even fun to read. Uh, let me show you some kind of things you can test in your documentation. Run automated tests to find spelling errors, unnecessary or missing punctuations, white spaces, syntax errors, broken links, mixing or unused images, style guide violations. Uh, and if you're using linter frequently, that makes it possible to detect errors and violations during writing. Uh, but let's bring it down to the basics. Here are some tools you can use and they are free. We are using Visual Studio Code for writing documentation and collaboration, uh, enhanced with Whale uh, for spell, style guide, markdown and HTML syntax checker, uh, for syntax checks, 
and of course uh, some Visual Studio Code extensions and some custom scripts for link validation, URL path and image checks. Visual Studio Code is a lightweight, powerful and free source code editor, uh, well supported with extensions for collaboration, text code highlights, grammar and syntax checks, dark and light themes for different working conditions or even taste, uh, customizable, uh, preferences are in YAML format. For example, you can set the frequency of the auto see feature by changing the value of a parameter. Um, most of the extensions are customizable, so you can combine their features together. Uh, can be useful for both developers and writers. Uh, and Whale is working with Visual Studio Code as an extension, but we are using Whale as, as, as a command line tool. And Whale itself is a linter. Uh, designed to enforce an existing style guide through its YAML-based extension system. And by an extension system, I mean uh, is a collection of writing guidelines called styles. Uh, and these guidelines are expressed through rules, which is are in YAML format. So you don't have to actually code anything. You can list words or regular expressions for more advanced patterns. Uh, and checks are uh, rule violations in the text in different aspects. So they are uh, actually can be used to detect these uh, violations. And uh, I listed the, all the available checks for whale right now, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper uh, during the demo. Uh, whale is compatible with many text editors as a resident extension working in real time, uh, but can be used, as I mentioned, as a command line tool, and we are committed to this version, and I will tell you now why. In this picture, uh, the content of the text file in markdown format uh, with an HTML table opened with VS code. Um, and as a technical writer, you may use more than one tool to check your documentation like other spy checkers like write good linter, markdown or code language syntax validators, readability testers, trailing white space highlighter and so on. On the right side, uh, now you can see the list of errors found by all installed and active validators. All these results are appearing in the main text uh, as a colored coded zigzag lines and in the problems window. We find it really overwhelming and we wanted to reuse the results for further analysis and we found it easier to export them from the terminal. A uh, common line whale is useful if you want to use whale outside of VS code, plus if you want to use whale together with your own linter solutions like custom URL paths, resource image checkers, you can display all the results in the same window and can run them together at the same time. In our setup, whale runs on every save, make it possible to detect errors and violations during writing. But uh, enough theory, let's put that linter into action. Now let's see what today's demo will cover. We are going to focus mostly on the developer environment, and I'm going to show you the workflow and the basic usage of, of the aforementioned tools, so you please don't assume it is a step-by-step -step demo. Let's suppose we have an old documentation on our developer portal for marketing purposes related to one of our API products uh, called Moon Rover Photos. The text is in common mark flavored markdown format and according to recent feedback from a user, it contains a broken link and some other typos. Uh, we are going to pull uh, the current state of the documentation and we are going to open it with uh, VS Code. Uh, let's assume that our company finished working on its style guide after this document is published. Uh, we have VL set up on our computer. We can run an automated test to find all errors and the style guide violations left in the text. After our corrections, we can commit our changes and publish the text again. Here you can see the home page of our demo developer portal. And if I scroll down to the featured API section here, I'm landing in the API catalog. Uh, let's select Moon Rover Photos. And uh, the text we have to check is this one. You may spot some errors without using any linter tool, like the empty link here, um, or, or the missing, missing bracket there. Uh, but we shouldn't be content with that. This is the text file from the from the web page. First, I'm going to save this file to run uh, the linter. As as you can see, the terminal window popped up and showing the list of issues we found in the text. 
I'm going to walk through the YAML files that you can see I already opened for you uh, before I start fixing the flows. Uh, here at the line three, you can see a spacing error, which uh, that says in the character of 67, uh, between these two characters, there are too much spaces left. As you can see, it's an existence uh, checker, which means it uh, look for an existence that is enlisted here in this file. I used regular expressions and it checks uh, if these punctuations are followed uh, directly with any of these characters. Then it said it has to be uh, one space separating these characters. Or if you use two or more uh, white spaces between these characters, it's also a market with an error flag. As maybe uh, you already spotted, there is this empty reference here. Uh, it's checked this uh, markdown link empty YAML file. It's also in existence and it uh, just checks if you left any uh, markdown reference empty. Uh, spelling is uh, based on Hunspell, one of the most popular and free spell checker and morphological analyzer library. Uh, we created two ignore files with the list of those expressions uh, like for file extensions, HTML tag names and such we don't want to be found during spell checking. Unwording is its long list of key value pairs as you can see. On the left are words we consider not to use in our documentation and on the right you can see the suggested substitute values. Uh, we used many of well-recognized sources and I would like to say thanks to the authors of these articles and the composers of these tie guys and the whole text the docs community, especially to Sven Strack for their effort to make possible to all of us to achieve more valuable documentation. The flows in the text, like the empty references I mentioned, were easy to spot on the previous page, uh, but its success depends on what markdown parser do you use. Let's take a look at the built-in preview. I just open it here. As you can see, uh, this part of the text rendered as a normal link that points to nowhere. Let's do the job. I delete the space from here and insert this link here. Let's see. Okay, we uh, correctly filled the empty uh, brackets with a link. It says, okay, it's now it's a well-formatted markdown URL. We have a typo here. Um, according to our spelling checker, we have a duplicated punctuation here. It's another existence checker and a missing bracket here. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, according to our uh, currently used uh, style guide, it, we have to consider using like instead of such as. So let's use like instead of such as. And after after our corrections, everything is fine. So uh, we can uh, commit our changes. Great, it's successful. And after uh, after a review run, let's say uh, our changes are accepted and we merged it to our repo, uh, we can see our uh, correct text uh, in the in the web page. So if you wonder how to start this process, I have some takeaways for you and Mark will have other tips to learn more. Uh, create a style guide according to your company standards, create rules and checks suitable for your workflow. Sometimes there is no right or wrong. Start using automated tests from the very beginning. If you can, write meaning for error messages to help yourself and your coworkers. Refer to the nature or the exit place of the problem and offer possible solutions. Don't automate everything. If an expression can be used differently according to its usage or surrounding, leave it for the human eyes. Uh, don't be afraid to reformulate or delete your rules if they are giving you plus work. They have to make your life easier. Never stop testing. Look for false alarms and edge cases and keep your style safe in a repository.
thank you very much. Okay, so thank you. Um, so if you are working on uh, implementing Docs as Code as part of your Doc Ops program or trying to start your technical writing team down the Doc Ops path, these are things that I was thinking about that you need to take into account. Develop those foundations that we talked about, your content strategy, uh, developing an editorial style guideline, and doing content analytics. Content analytics can be very important for you to um, establish that baseline for where you are, as well as uh, helping justify um, what you're doing to uh, other members of uh, your organization, your stakeholders. Evaluate your current dev portal. Look at you know what's there now. Is it meeting the, need, the needs of your uh, less technical contributors, your business contributors? Um, is it meeting the needs of your technical writers? Are your developers participating in such a way that um, uh, the changes that they're make, making uh, easily land on your developer portal? Um, also, just don't forget that every organization is different in the way that changes have to be introduced, and some people uh, run into problems because they just forget about um, how different uh, how their organization handles change. And um, you can, at least in one occasion, maybe more than one. Uh, I was labeled as uh, kind of going rogue because I wasn't following our company's change management process. Uh, so think about that and how to manage it. If you're not currently partnering with and uh, collaborating tightly with your developer team, uh, that's a, that, that one change is uh, going to be critical to you no matter what kind of tools you use. I think you're gonna see gains from that. Uh, so investigate the tools that they're using, see where you may be able to leverage things that they've already spent time developing. Uh, gain their trust by using a sandbox if they've got it. And um, even if you don't start with any of their tooling, um, a great thing that uh, seems obvious to me, but I've seen many organizations uh, where it didn't happen, but uh, have your tech writers participate in uh, their stand-ups, um, have them in the same Slack channels so that um, the tech writer gets a preview of what's happening in the developer team and you're not surprised with a batch of work or changes that have to be made last minute because you're you know already working in sync with them um, again uh, as adam said uh, start small and uh, grow from success so look for a pain point that you have in your system uh, put some automation around that and uh, then grow from there Last but not least, we've learned so much from our communities and we try to be a very active community participant. Uh, there are so many people out there who are passionate about these topics and they're gonna help you along the way. Um, I'm glad that Spin was mentioned, Spin Strack uh, was the guy who uh, took this from a conceptual level for me. You know, I was a, I was a development manager, so I understood these workflows, but he started showing me uh, some of the, the tools and techniques for Docs as Code. Uh, so uh, I'm thankful to him and I'm trying to help pay it forward by uh, this talk and uh, pre presenting in community talks. Uh, here's some helpful resources. Um, at Pronovix, um, we have a lot of uh, non-marketing based content where uh, we really try to focus on making um, a lot of very useful resources consumable by a large audience. Uh, so don't think I'm trying to send you to pronovix.com uh, to, to try to sell you. We've got, a, we publish a newsletter uh, and we really try to make sure that there's a lot of great content there to help uh, improve you um, no matter you know, who you're doing business with. Here's a couple of communities. Uh, the Test the Docs community is pretty small, but Write the Docs community is huge, and they're very, uh, they've got great resources around uh, testing on their site as well. Um, 
I already mentioned API of the Docs, but uh, API Days, we, we go to those conferences, and DevRelCon is great. Uh, so check these these out. Um, specifically from DevRelCon, um, I, I talked with Adam Butler, and he gave me permission to, to quote him here. Um, he said, uh, focus on things that actually add some value, like docs, uh, docs like code. Take engineering practices because that works really well for written content as well. And so I hope we've been able to demonstrate that uh, at least in a, a small fashion today.